we just want to welcome you and uh, thank everybody from um, the BBNC Bank, um, Aliasar, and the Dream That US uh, for coming together and putting this uh, financial responsibility Google Hangout together. <clears throat> so before we start, I just wanted to do, do some quick updates and just let you guys know that we currently have a mini special round happening uh, for uh, scholars who are interested in applying for the Dream That US scholarship. And um, hopefully we have people that can help us get the word out and um, can let people know that this is a time to apply for the scholarship. So um, without further ado, I want to introduce to you the BBNC Bank that is going to be presenting today. And uh, with us, we have two people from BBNC. We have Juan Solis and Ariana Flores. Um, thank you so much to both of you for joining us. Um, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about both of them. So Ariana, she is she's currently right now joining us from Arlington, um, these, or close to DC, but Arlington, Virginia. And Ariana um, has been working with the bank for seven years. One of the things she was telling us was that she started as a part-time seller and worked her way up to now being the regional multicultural uh, person that works with the committee and also helps um, the bank in that sense. And then as well, we have Juan Solis. And Juan is from San Antonio, Texas. And he uh, has been very, very active in his very uh, short time uh, living. You know, he's very young. But um, even though he, uh, he's very young, he's actually been a former council member and a state representative in Texas, um, and specifically San Antonio. So I want to welcome both of you to our Google Hangout. And um, we also have Eliasar, who you've already uh, worked with and talked to, and he helped us set up this Google Hangout. And me, Gabby, um, your director for the Dream That US Scholarship. So I wanted to ask um, Ariana and Juan, before anything, we usually ask our guest speakers a question about um, themselves and specifically college. And so Ariana and Juan, um, if you went to college, what would you tell yourself? What would you could go back in the time machine and talk to your old self when you're in college? What would you say that's really important um, now? And uh, if you didn't go to college, what, why, um, you know, would you go back to college or? Or what will you do now, knowing uh, of the college experience? So, Ariana, do you want to start? Okay. Well, there's a lot of things I would have told myself if I could go back. But one of them was that there was it was okay if I did not um, end up using my major in a real life career, because eventually everything that I learned in college has helped me in banking. Um, my degrees in government and international politics, so the communication part really helped me, helping my clients financially and be able to be part of the chair committee, but I would say that it's okay if you if you go in and you decide that what you thought you wanted to do wasn't what you you know you wanted to, to do anymore, that you could switch. And most times you'll find that whatever you major in, you might go into something completely different, but your degree will always help you in whatever job that you decide to go into. Um, you, I, I truly believe in college education. It just makes things easier. It helps you be educated and make really good, sound financial decisions and also at work. So that's what I would recommend. Those are very wise words, and I'm going to... Uh, take those with me and I'm going to try to talk to other people about it because actually um, yesterday somebody was asking me just about that, right? Um, I, I'm going to be speaking at a college in Maryland and they said, you know, a lot of people say, why, what, what do I do with a gender studies, for instance, degree, right? Um, how do I apply that to what I'm doing? And you can do a lot with it. So thank you, Ariana, for, for sharing and dropping that knowledge for our students. Juan, um, what would you say? Well, you know, it's actually I'm 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 at the crux of, of something really important. My I have twins that are 16 years old, juniors in high school. Uh, both are attending college preparatories right now, 
and we're getting them ready for that decision, right? Where it's not a question of whether they're going to go. It's like, which one do you want to go? Um, one of the things, in that, and I want to concur with what Ariana was talking about. To me, it was about passion. Whatever you want to choose to do, follow that. And if that's the degree, as an example, you heard about my politics and stuff, but my degree is a radio, television, and film degree. Oh. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in radio. Okay. Okay, and now we, we lost Juan for a second. Juancito, we stopped hearing you. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think we, we lost, lost him there. Second. Yeah. But it's funny because he was just going to start telling us about his radio degree and what he did as, you know, probably a broadcaster. Um, <laughs> but we'll, uh, he'll be able to join us. Oh, there he is. Okay, Juancito, we lost you for a second. Make sure you're not on mute. Oh, no, we still can hear you. <laughs> Hold on, let me send him an I am. Okay. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for the people who are watching us right now. Um, uh, we are located right now in DC and there's a snowstorm, so there's snow happening. And I think, Juan, are you there? You're back with us? Maybe not yet. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's a snowstorm and so we know that some of you who are in New York um, and other parts of the country, except for California, I've seen this map all over Facebook that makes fun of the fact that all over, um, all over the, the, both the East Coast, the West, and the Northeast area, we are freezing, but Californians, all of you over there are having beautiful weather, so enjoy it. Um, so we'll wait until Juancito comes back, but one of the things that we wanted to um, tell you is that we want to continue to bring these presentations to you. Um, please let us know what are some of the things that you want to listen to and you want to hear from us. Um, and we know that you know for, for a lot of you, banking is, is really important, right? This is probably going to be the first time you open a bank account with DACA, having uh, your work permit having a social security number, so we're, we wanted to make sure to help you with that. So, Juancito, can you hear us and can we hear you? You can hear us, but we can hear you. You could hear us, but we can hear you. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Okay, um, maybe if you uh, connect and disconnect again. And what we'll do is we'll have Ariana start the presentation. Um, just because we are going to be running short on time, okay. uh, we don't start. But um, yeah, so so we're going to go through a PowerPoint presentation that BBNT created for you guys. And um, one of the things that you're going to find out if you have participated in Google Hangouts in the past is that we do provide little gifts and stuff, incentives for um, answering the questions or even asking good questions. So. Hang on with us until the top of the hour at 1 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time when uh, we'll be finishing the, the presentation. And Ariana's going to start with us and she's going to share with all of you um, financial banking and responsibility. Go ahead, take it, Ariana. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. This is actually a topic that I'm um, very passionate about. And I would love to answer any questions and just know that uh, we are we have an agenda but if there's any questions that I can answer outside or online um, Gabby has my email and she's more than welcome to forward that over to you guys so if you guys have questions you don't feel comfortable asking I can most definitely answer them so let's go ahead and get started here I'll go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see my beautiful PowerPoint alrighty so let's go ahead and talk about what do banks do I think that's very important because a lot of people think that banks are just about wanting your money and it's much more than that. Um, we offer financial services such as secure, securely holding funds for clients so as, as um, most may not know your funds are always secure here at any financial institution that is FDIC insured 
And FDIC um, stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, so they insure your money. But apart from just holding your money, we also extend money to you when you have any emergency. You want to expand, maybe buying a home, maybe you want to buy your own car. We can go ahead and assist with that by lending money to clients and even businesses. So when businesses decide to expand, we want to be able to help them achieve their, their dream of expanding their business. We also offer various accounts besides your regular checking and savings. We have retirement accounts, we have credit card accounts, and we, um, my favorite are, personally for me, are the ones that you can set aside to save for college, like the 529 plans, college saver CDs, and, and we can talk more about that in the budgeting piece. We do provide insurance services to help protect you and the things that you value most. And the other one is financial planning, and you're probably wondering, well, what is financial planning? Financial planning is making sure that uh, if something were to happen, you're, you're, you're financially planned as to how you want your funds to be dispersed, and making sure that you just make the process for your loved ones easy, and making sure that not only in, in the aspect of if something happens to you, but also in the aspect of achieving your economical goals, such as buying a home, buying a car, so we have to help you plan for that. So what? that's what we do. But today we're going to... Ariana, am I in yet? I can hear you. Can you Can you hear oh, me? Oh, that is excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's continue. I, I think I wanted to talk in specific to you about the financial planning. I think the biggest thing for me is, is understanding that it's never too early to start. But especially when you're in college, you're probably thinking, what in the world are they even talking about? Uh, as you start going and you lay some really good foundation, you will see the dividends pay off much in the future if you start to look at these type of activities now. When I was in college, you know, we didn't have that opportunity as much to learn about this, but these type of presentations, these type of knowledge, this type of knowledge can make a really big difference. Thank you, Juan, and you're absolutely right. So, um, Back to you, Ariana. I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the checking piece, and then I will turn it over to Juan for the savings piece. So um, a checking account uh, that you should know is it allows the clients and yourself the ability to deposit and withdraw funds out of. You can have a limited access to that via the branches, the ATM, and debit card, and usually interest is not paid on checking accounts. And the reason being is because it is an account that's actively uh, with movement at all the time. And so there are certain regulations that doesn't allow us to pay interest. So your checking accounts for your everyday usage, that's where you would set up to go ahead and be able to pay your bills. And you can also be able to have your direct deposit from your employer to be able to come in and you have access it to the, to the ways that I just mentioned earlier. It's very important to, to be able to have a checking account because, one, it provides security because your funds are always protected. Two, the convenience of, let's say that you're working for an employer, but you don't work that Friday to pick up the check. Well, guess what? If you have direct deposit, you can just get up out of bed and say, oh, man, my money's there, and just head out and start spending like I do, which I, I wish I wouldn't do because I, I need to save. And then also, it gives you the, the discipline to be able to budget because you're able to see all the transactions that you go ahead and do on your online banking. So it's a really great um, account to have, and it's something that I encourage all my clients to have, even though it might not be with bb and It's just a key uh, fundamental thing to have for your everyday life and it helps you financially plan. So and, um, we're going to be sending the presentation to all the students. Um, but and people can follow along looking at your screen, correct? Right. Yeah. Perfect. And then, um, what slide are you on right now? I am on slide three. Okay. I three. think it's right now. It's showing slide number one. Okay. Hold on. Can you see it now? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, I apologize about that. Um, so I have a trivia question. So I like to hear how, uh, who can tell me how old do you need to be to open up a checking account? Ooh, I actually don't know that one. Let's see if the students know. You can um, send in your questions through um, the Google Hangout that you're watching right now, and we'll start seeing questions coming in. Let's see. What is the question again, Ariana? How old do you need to be to open up a checking account? Okay, let's wait a few minutes to see. <coughs> what are the questions that come in? Or the answers, actually, that come in? <laughs> Anybody respond yet? Come on, viewers. <laughs> it's not, you cannot go into Google and Google this. <laughs> Just take a <laughs> it's gonna be it's actually going to differ by state by state. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, Karina is saying, I think it's 16. Is it 16? Well, it's a tricky question. But, yes, yeah, someone at the age of 16 could open up a checking account. They oh. would actually just need to have a co-owner um, co on the account that's over the age of 18. So it's very common that individuals, even to the age of 15, but the most common one is the age of 16 where you can start, where they have their mother or their father jointly on their account to be able to access a checking account, and they can use the funds um, independently. Well, even though they have their parent attached to the account, they can use it. So great job. Usually it's a tricky one. Um, but, yes, a 16-year-old can open up a checking account. Absolutely. Do you want me to move on to the savings account? Yes. All right, not a problem. So savings accounts are something that we all know about, but the problem that we always have is the fact of how we're ever going to accomplish it. So savings account is, is an interest-bearing account where you can deposit your money and you store it away for expected emergencies or for backup for your checking account. Um, but also when you start to look at it, a savings account allows you to be able to start putting some money aside for the things that you want to be able to accomplish, be it that first car, be it to, to, to maybe that vacation trip you want to take, uh, or perhaps to help somebody at Christmas. All these are things that you need to start looking at and utilizing the savings account. The savings account will usually allow you to withdraw three times a month, and that makes a big difference, right? But you can deposit unlimited. Now, you and I both know reality. Reality is it's the hardest thing in the world is to save because we tend to use it as a backup to our checking account, meaning that we really don't save. We put it aside. Yet the first thing we tap into when we're coming up short for the month. So for us, one of the things that we want to encourage you is to start looking at how you can be more consistent. One of the things that I appreciate all of you, all 47 of you that are on the call this morning, is the discipline you're showing just today. You recognize Saturday morning, and there's plenty of other things you could be doing, but you've taken the time to appreciate, and it makes a big difference because that's the type of discipline that is needed when we get into savings accounts. The discipline that we're asking for is a simple set aside of your of your money, and it could be whatever number. If you think about it, getting ready for next year, well, starting now. now. Now is an ideal time to set aside that type of activity because when you do it, you don't have the big hit at Christmas and you're able to have that money ready to go. We all know the big secret is Black Friday, right? Got to be ready for that Black Friday because when it happens, if you don't have the cash ready, you miss out on all the opportunities. This is a great way to, for you to set aside some money to be ready for those days and future. As we and any banker that you meet, that from BB&T we can help you plan for your future. And that means that first vehicle, that means the opportunity to move if you have to when you move with that job that you're going to secure. And the other thing is those opportunities that also come up in college, and that is the opportunity to do perhaps an internship 
or perhaps go abroad to study. Those are types of actions that require some sort of savings so that when you get there, you're not This is the I'm going to also start, so we can start the trivia questions, right? So you know I'm in San Antonio, Texas, right? Right in the middle of Texas. So you all can start sending in the notifications because I want to know, I will reward the furthest person to San Antonio, Texas with a $25 Target card and you start emailing Gabby or getting on the Google stuff and telling her that this is what needs to be done. So if you will, I would appreciate you start doing that while I talk about the student checking account. Each of you in, our, in college are eligible for a student checking account. It's a simple account. Comes with check card, which is your debit card. Comes with online banking, which is the latest and the greatest thing, kind of like we're doing today. Technology is wonderful. But here's something about technology you got to understand. Nobody is responsible for your account more than yourself. You know what you deposit. You know what you spend. Do not rely on technology to balance your checkbook. Simple mathematics, right? You put in 40 bucks. You cannot spend 60 dollars. Just don't happen. If you do, you're going to get charged with an overdraft, which you and I both don't want to talk about. But when you open a student account, we allow you to have it with no, main, no monthly fee, and there's no, here's a big part, no minimum balance requirement. That's what's important for you to look at, a student checking a credit. Hey, Ariana, you want to go over why I have a bank account? Sure. So now <laughs> So nowadays, a lot of us have resorted to, to going yes, to the cashing places and prepaid debit cards, especially when we're filing taxes. And as you know, when you start uh, working, there are federal and state taxes that you're paying at, that at the end of the year you would file for. So a lot of times, the first thing they ask you is, if you have a refund coming to you, where would you like to have it deposited? Well, if you don't have an account, you're either going to receive a check or a prepaid card. Nowadays, it, there's an average fee of three to five percent um, to cash a paycheck. Can you imagine paying that um, if you're having a paycheck every week? And so uh, you can always cash the checks at other financial institutions. But the issue with that is that if you go and take the check to the um, bank that the check is drawn. So, for example, let's say your employer bank, uh, banks with Bank of America, and they gave you a check from Bank of America, and you go to Bank of America. Bank America could charge you a fee for cashing the check. Same here with BB&T. If you were to come and bring a check that's drawn on BB&T, you would assess a fee for the convenience of cashing the check. There's also, with prepaid debit cards, you don't have the access of being able to have a representative to assist you. With prepaid cards, it's a 1-800 number. And my recommendation is always that you want someone to deal with face-to-face -to, -face to be able to answer any questions that you may have. So a lot of times, even though it, there are some requirements that you need to meet to have a check-in account, it's always much more beneficial to do that as opposed to going to a check hashing place. And more importantly, you're going to be able to find yourself being able to use your debit card that, that has um, zero visa liability. So if you lose your debit card and someone uses it, you're able to recover that money. You can't do that with cash. You lose $20 on the sidewalk, you're not recovering those $20. And also, you're going to be able to write your checks to be able to keep track of the expenses that you're doing. You have your online banking where you can check to see what debits and credits have been done, and you can get your direct deposit going into your account as opposed to having checks. To make deposits into BB&T, there's no charge. The only thing is if you don't meet the requirements, you may assess a monthly service fee. But because you guys are students, and Juan talked about this earlier, there's a student account that would, wouldn't require you to keep a minimum balance. There wouldn't be any maintenance fee. And so I always encourage a checking account over the check cashing, fee, uh, check cashing places any day. Juan, do you have anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. I want to follow up on that. I think it's important. I mean, I teach my kids. My kids are 16 right now, getting ready to go to college, uh, you know, taking those SATs and getting all pumped up about where they're going to go. But one of the things, I already have started them on a checking account. And they have to understand the responsibilities. They're able to see it online. And more importantly, I think what, what Aniana said is correct. You guys work too hard for your money to be giving it away to check, check cashing places 
or other places that take 1%, 2%, you really, you know, I know it's easy to say, ah, it's only 1%, it ain't no big deal. But that stuff adds up. That stuff adds up. And, you know, one you know, you're, you're paying 10 bucks for a good lunch. And so there's no sense in you paying for a lunch just to cash a check for the money that you earn. And I think there are many opportunities and many companies now that are looking to take advantage of people uh, when a simple education uh, knowledge that we're embarking with you today can make a difference for you. So I agree completely with what Aniana talks about because there are opportunities for you to, and then the other part is as you become older and as you're looking at, at becoming more established as a college graduate, as an entrepreneur, as a professional in the world, all of those things that you have learned here will help you in the future and establishes yourself as you go forward. It's one of the, it's part to me of the American dream. You have your checking account, you have the ability to be able to maintain your money, and that's what's important. Great, thank you. And the other thing that I also add is a lot of times this is a reality and I and I know this in a cultural perspective, but it's hard to trust banks, especially because of the reputation that sometimes is given. But what I can assure you is finding the bank that meshes well with you is, is the key. You want to be able to find a place where you feel comfortable and you have a representative that's going to be able to answer your questions. But I can assure you, you should not be afraid to go in and inquire about questions because you are the reason we are in business. And I think that I personally, when I have a client that's coming in and open an account for the first time, I educate them. And there's so many resources that financial institutions provide to you to let you know where you can go and find more information to educate yourself. So you're not alone in the process. And like I said, uh, Juan and I, you guys can have our email, and you're more than welcome to um, ask any questions in regards to the opening accounts and what the process looks like and what to expect. So don't be afraid. Yeah, I, and I think one other thing that I would like to emphasize with that is what's important for us is that the evolution of banking has continued and continues today. As an example, when your parents went and wrote a check in the past, they used to write a check and you had a float date. Maybe they wrote it on Friday, they didn't have to worry about it till Monday. That no longer exists. Technology has advanced on that. A clear example is what happens at Walmart now. You write a check at Walmart, they give you the check right back. What does that mean? They made it an electronic transfer and they took the money immediately from your account as you walk away. So to me, helping break down the myths the myth that people had that they learned from their parents, some of those old concepts are no longer valid. And it's important for us to be able to provide that new technology to you and understand. Our parents didn't understand taking a picture of a, of a check and deposit it in our account. They didn't understand going online or on my phone like I do today and check my balance or transfer money. They never had that. You have the opportunity to do that. But that's the key is to understanding the responsibility that comes with technology. And that's basic financial responsibility of maintaining something. And that leads to our budgeting, which Adriano is going to talk about to next. All righty. So I will have you, uh, I'll talk about what is budgeting, and then Juan will talk about how to. And then we're going to play an example of a budget. And what I want you guys to do is we're going to play the need versus the want game. And I'll explain how that works. But... What is budgeting? A budget is a spending plan that you decide upon. So you, you want ahead and let's say you make a certain amount of income, right? It's going to be based on how much you make and what your monthly expenses are. And the most important thing is you have to understand what your income can support and what expenses you can afford. That way you're going to be able, um, you're going to be um, a better able to manage your cash flow and determine how much debt if you can assume. So budgeting is key. You cannot go on financially in life not knowing what you earn and what you spend and just thinking, oh, okay, I'm fine. A lot of times clients make the mistake of, oh, my direct deposit, and, and, and they go and they spend, but they don't take priority of what their expenses are. They're like, oh, it's payday, time for those new shoes, um, there's something that we really need it. You have to make an outline of what your expenses are. You can't go out and, and take a paycheck and just you know, assume that that's a, a, um, sufficient for what you want to accomplish. Especially if you want to start saving, the budget will allow you to know how much your expenses are, 
where you can cut, cut expenses to be able to buy those things that you do want, like the shoes and the nice purse and the nice coat. But first, you have to budget to make sure that your expenses are taken care of and savings. And then we can talk about the things we want. Because the need is something that's necessary, and that's something that you have no choice but to pay. A want is it something that do you really need? Is it something that you can hold up and hold on? And so uh, Juan will talk a little bit about how you can budget, and then we'll go into an example of a budget. And exactly. Then, and once again, I want to go back and emphasize the very phrase. Budgeting is simply balancing your expenses with your income. It's nothing more complicated. What comes in, what goes out. Again, you guys already do this. I know it because you're in college. <laughs> you don't have money every day to go out to eat. You don't have time to be able to do it. You're balancing what they've given you as a scholarship. Perhaps you're working. So we're actually preaching to the crier here, I am sure, that you are watching your pennies because that's all you got right now. That's reality of things that are going on. But for us, what we want to be able to do as you grow, your income will grow, your responsibilities will grow. And that's where the needs and the wants come into play. So simply reviewing that, no need to be all analytical about it, going overboard, making sure that everything matches and it will match, it will come down. And as we say in the banking business, it will balance. A balance is simply what comes in, what goes out, what's left over goes to your savings, life is easy. But it's when we, when you spend a little bit more, or perhaps you pick up some habits, as Ariana was talking about, habits that were like, oh, it's it's payday tomorrow. I can I can over budget here, realizing tomorrow my paycheck comes in and covers it. That's where we'll have a little bit of trouble. That's where you need to be able to learn early the responsibilities that you have. But like I said earlier, I mean we're speaking to the choir. You guys are on a college budget now. You guys understand it. And, and we applaud you for being able to look at that and realize that there is a responsibility you will have as you grow to get into more opportunities uh, as income grows. What we want to be able to do today is at least touch on some fundamentals of what it looks like. And if you go to the next slide and you see the example of a budget, that's what we'll be looking at. That's about check. You look back and you see what are the expenses. One of the things I think that is the craziest expense that we never had growing up, at least for most people, and I'm going back to your parents and your grandparents and your tios and your tias and everybody else, they never had a cell phone budget. All they had was a phone at home that probably cost them like 30 bucks a month. Now look at cell phone bills. Look at the cost that is associated with that. It is a tremendous extra expense that most people never budgeted for and now they have to it comes in with cable cell phone those are those are things that you didn't look before but Aniana will go through the monthly budget and you can see the difference from what your parents used to budget for to what now you have to prepare to budget for Aniana all right so this is a cute a little sample of this person's budget and so here's I hope everyone can see this and so if we look at this budget, you can see what this person is making um, on a, on a bi-weekly basis. And so that's their income. And then there's their expenses. Their expenses, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and look at this. We have the expenses of cable, cell phone, clothes, electric, entertainment, gas, groceries, insurance, rent, visa, which is for credit card, water, don't know, and and that adds to total expenses. But if you look at the bottom, this person is breaking even. Can someone tell me what is something that you see in the budget that this person's not doing? We got 31 people to respond. Anyone? <laughs> I think I probably have to help you. Now we have 32 viewers. Does anybody respond? There's actually um, somebody that asked a question, and we'll hold that question 
Um, they're asking about credit cards to build credit, but um, Ariana, get it was taking a little bit for the the screen to come up. It's now up. Can you um, go over it again and ask the question? Yeah, sure. So here we have an example of a budget. This person's check, and then we see the ex expenses. So the expenses are cable, cell phone, clothes, electric, entertainment, gas, groceries, insurance, rent. Then you have Visa, which is a credit card water and don't know and if you look at the bottom this person is breaking the even so all the expenses are going to the total income so when you look at this what is this person not doing in the response I'm not even sure. <laughs> I know what they're not doing. <laughs> they're not saving. saving. Somebody's saying crystal. Yeah, yeah, go. They're not saving. That's exactly right. So this individual is breaking even, but they're not saving at all. So what if this person had a medical emergency? This person would be in big trouble. <clears throat> so now this is this is something that I always like to do. So one of the things that you should always take into account when you're doing your budget is where can you reduce money and how can you save money and what can you eliminate. So looking at this, what are a couple of things that you think this person should go ahead and revisit? <laughs> what do you think they should they should reevaluate and see if this is a necessity or a want? Where can they save money? Well, electricity is important, right? <laughs> Especially in cold weather. That's a need. Now let's see what people are saying on our... Probably cable. Cable? Clothes. So is cable a need or a want? The questions and the answers are coming in. It takes a second for the questions to come through. No worries. But I also want to say that Karina is on a roll. She also said that what was missing was saving, so thank you. Lisa Chung is saying that um, there's too much entertainment happening. And too much entertainment, yeah. One month, $250. What was he doing? <laughs> that is definitely a want. So let's look at that. So if he hadn't spent that amount of money, $105, $250, plus $75, that's $430 he could have set aside in a savings account. Yep. Maria Miranda was saying that clothes is too much. And uh, Jessica actually was saying, Juan, that cable's a want. Yep. I totally agree with that one. <laughs> And then what about that credit card? Man, so I'm 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 very uh, I'm very sad to know that so uh, that someone hasn't pointed out the don't know. This person doesn't oh, actually know. I I saw the don't know but um <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. Okay, so that means that there is some money in the don't know area. The students are saying uh, that you know what's happening there, right? So this person is spending money that he doesn't even know he spent on. That's true. So uh, that don't know is a total. Uh, so we take one ninety six, another two ninety six, and another four ninety three. That's nine hundred eighty five dollars. And it keeps increasing, and he doesn't know where it's increasing. This person has has to quickly be evaluated. 
<laughs> he has some issues with his money. <laughs> now, why are you assuming it's a he? That's what I'm asking. Oh. <laughs> well, I believe when I got it, it had the name of a guy. So we're just going to go with that, Juan. All right, all right. Okay, so um, I've cleared the queue for the questions, and everybody just did really fabulous. Thank you so much for sending in your, your questions. And we're writing down the names of the people who are um, answering these correct. And we're also going to be able to, uh, like Juan and Ariana said, send out the information, both the PowerPoint presentation and the contact information in case that you need to reach out to them. And Juan, you, you had made a challenge to them of a $25 gift card. Can you explain what how that's working again? I, I just want to know who is listening out there that is the furthest from San Antonio. So I suppose just submit your place and then I'll leave it up to your knowledge, Gabby, to say, okay, this one's in, I mean, I, I'm assuming it's across the United States. So let's see who is, who is responding and I, you know, I'll do it the first two. Two of them, I'll take two calls to the callers that respond um, and just say they're they're not in Texas. Outside of Texas is what I'm looking for. And let's see who's going to respond, and I'll be glad to ship them their, uh, their target cards. Okay. So make sure that you um, give us your name and the city that you are hanging out with us from. So um, my guess is that probably it's going to be between California and New York. And if it's people from California, uh, they got up extra early to be on this hangout with us. So I guess that makes sense too for the whoever sends them in, um, the first person to get this this nice token um, uh, as the card. So thank you so much. And and somebody's actually really close to you, Houston, Texas. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll go visit that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she put a little Excellent. Face. <laughs> Go ahead, take it, you guys. <laughs> All right. So this is what everyone's been waiting for, because I know this is where everyone has burning questions about, and that's credit. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the credit piece, and then uh, Juan's going to talk about ways to build credit, and then we'll go ahead and uh, what tips for using credit responsibly, okay? So what is credit? Well, the best way to, to identify is through a credit report. So the credit report, what it does for us lenders is it allows us to understand what that person's repayment history is. And usually this is measured by the credit score. So I'm sure that you've heard people say, oh, what's your credit? Well, mine's a 700. Oh, mine is 660. Oh, I have a better score, 800. Everyone wants to achieve over the 800 score. I don't even have that. So. Um, don't worry if you're not quite at 800. It's actually 850, but if you're not there, don't feel bad. As long as you're taking care of your credit, that's the most important part. So what's the benefit of having the higher credit? Well, the higher credit allows um, – it's better for you as a borrower because it permits you to have more, more favorable interest rates. And it ha allows you to be able to go ahead and reflect that you have good credit. Now, a lot of times, people may have good credit scores, but their repayment history is bad. They've had collections where they didn't pay their bill and they were sent to the collection agency, or they've even filed bankruptcy. And with bankruptcy, even though you file bankruptcy, you can always reestablish credit. It's just a matter of how are you going to take your how good of a care are you going to take your credit now that it's occurred. And you're more likely to get approved if you have good credit history, good credit score. So this report is basically, you can't go anywhere without it. It is attached to your social security card. So it's so important that you protect your social security card. And there's w numerous ways that you can do it. Making sure that if someone calls you and is asking for your social security number, do not give it to them. Also, do not leave out any applications. When you shred your papers and it may have your social security, <coughs> make sure you you shred it. The other thing is also is it may cost a little money, but having little um, identity theft protection features. Sometimes some companies charge 10, others 15, 
But it gives you the peace of mind that if someone does uh, steal your identity, you'll be reached out and you can monitor your, your credit report. Um, and so with that being said, let's talk about how you can establish credit because if you haven't have taken out a loan or a credit card or have had any type of credit, then you are most likely don't even have a credit score. And I don't want you to think, oh, that's negative. No, it just means you haven't built up any history for the credit report to go ahead and measure what your number will be. So Juan, can you go ahead and talk to them about build ways to build credit? Absolutely. Let me, let me tell you the most um, the most saddest thing that we see is when young people come in particular and they apply for a loan and and they say and we say we can't. So here's the typical response. Well how am I ever gonna have a loan if nobody takes a chance on me? And so mm -hmm. like all sentidos and heart and like well <clears throat> we got to start somewhere, and that's what we're talking about. How do you start? Because it's not going to be given to you without a history. And as Ariana said, the history is what's key. So what we suggest is that you start to look at the opportunities that are given to you. In colleges, you sometimes will receive applications for the student credit card. You can go to your local bank like BET, and they have student credit cards to start off the opportunity. You apply for a small loan, but in each instance, the key and the responsibility that you have is to maintain, read the terms, and follow the terms of the agreement. <clears throat> in every single time, it's not a question of you all of a sudden having this extra $200, $500 available to you for the needs of the wants, mostly the wants, but that you really actually take care of it and grow it. Those little simple steps of just following the 30-day notice, making sure you got the payment on time, each one is being noted every single time. The best thing is to always remember to pay it on time. Do not get into the habit of, oh, I'll, I'll double it up next time. That doesn't give you any credit. What is being evaluated is how you're dealing with the responsibility that has been given to you. That is the way you ought to see this. I've been granted an opportunity to pull money and pay back a certain portion, if not all of it, every month. That's all they ask. They're not asking you for to make double. They're not asking it to be at zero. They're asking that you understand the responsibility. Because once you understand that responsibility, that creates the positive credit history. So look for the opportunities that exist <clears throat> at your banks to be able to do a student credit card or a small loan. Those are great opportunities for you to be able to do it. You also have the opportunity to be a co-borrower as an example with your father or, or somebody else of significance, but those are also to me not the best choice. To me, I prefer that you establish credit in your own name by yourself and taking the initiative to understand and accept the keyword responsibility that is being given to you. Adriana's going to talk about what makes you credit worthy now. All righty. So, for the for the um, sake of time, but I will, uh, we'll send this PowerPoint. But what it what we mean with credit worthiness is the things that we look at when we're look, doing a loan or a credit card, like disposable income, asset owned, debt management, residence history. Resident history is important just because we want to know that there's some stability. Also, employment history, just to make sure that you know you have a stable job. It isn't something seasonal, and there is going to be a repayment. And also, utilities. Even without credit history, it's, it's possible for people to sign up for utilities. And sometimes, when we can't get a loan done because someone does not have a credit score or credit report, sometimes utility companies will provide you a letter saying that you have been a really good credit worthy candidate, you've paid on time, you haven't defaulted, they haven't turned off your water. So making sure that when you do apply for utilities, you pay it on time. Even though it may not report directly to your credit report, it's still good to go ahead and have them because you'll never know when they're going to vouch for you. So with that being said, we'll talk about tips for 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 uh, for using credit responsibly. And I'll just go a um, go through three and then Juan can go through the rest. So it's very easy to build credit, but it's more difficult to maintain it. And you have to be smart and be able to control your credit and make the monthly payments. 
on time, okay? You don't want to be like, oh, well, my direct deposit comes in next week. I'll go ahead and pay it there. I'll, I'll go ahead and pay the late fee. You don't want to get into the habit of that because it, it, it creates um, a really bad behavior. You want to keep your loan balances low and try to pay them off each month. Your debt payment should not be no more than 10% of your monthly income. So take your monthly income and take and then take 10% out of it. And what we mean with keep your balances low is you never want to utilize more than 55% or even 50% of the credit limit. So let's say you have a credit card for $1,000, you don't want to use no more than 500. Um, no more than 500. And the reason being is because when you're maxing out your credit cards to a full limit, it kind of gives us a taste that you're living off credit. Also, keep track of your line so you know how much you have used and how much is available at any given time because, again, you don't want to go over. Use your budget to manage expenses and do not overspend. Remember, you have to pay this back. Even though it's given to you, you are going to have to pay it back. Don't resort to saying, well, I don't care about my credit. They can just send me collections. I won't pay for it. It will haunt you for the rest of your life when you want to buy a car, when you want to buy a house. Maybe you're in business and you're trying to get a voucher saying that you are a good, credit-worthy person. Well, if your credit report shows negative, That may be an issue. Whenever yeah. you spend your money, save your receipt. Ariane, I think we are losing you. Can you hear us? Yeah. <coughs> I think she was running out of gas, remember? Yes. So you um you wanna continue, Juancito? I will. I will. And I think what's what's really important what she mentioned earlier <clears throat> was about managing your, your budget expenses and do not overspend. Plan, as we talked about earlier in savings for the larger purchases. Uh, and the last bullet point I think was was really key and that is understanding that you you can't overreact to a credit card. And how I, I, I talk about that is is don't close it just to close it. It is better to zero balance it and maintain it as open than rather than getting upset closing it because that negatively affects your credit score. And people don't understand it. They think, well, I'm, I'm, I got rid of it. It's gone. I don't need it anymore. That is not the issue for us. <clears throat> it's an example of perhaps you're not willing to, re again, handle your responsibility or thing like that. So what we need to be able to do is I would suggest if you get tired of one, if you're upset with a credit card or perhaps a company you're working with, just zero balance it. In the drawer, use it for another emergency comes up. Or something else happens that perhaps you weren't ready for, but do not close them because if you close too many, at so many times you get upset. Then, because that's usually when people close them is when they're upset, and, and then you lose some points on your credit history. So it's important that we we continue to look at that. It basically aligns itself. Now, what's interesting to me. Again, what it is to live with responsibilities. You have met me since you have put this responsibility strong. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, You're back in? We were losing you for a second. Oh, okay. How about now? Back? Yes. Okay. And, and so my point is, as as these re, the the scholars that you are, you, you've already demonstrated your ability to handle responsibility. Let's just continue in the banking world. Working in the financial industry allows us to help you understand how opportunities are coming your way. We know each of you will have the opportunity to grow not only in professionalism but in income. And when it comes to income, thinking responsibly is going to make a big difference for all of us. Now, what questions do you have about as we wrap up minutes? Because I think we're down to six or seven minutes left, right? Yeah, yeah. So we actually have good questions coming in. Um, Edson wanted to know that he's been offered a lot of credit cards, um, and he hasn't actually taken any of them. So he says, um, I've been offered a lot of credits, which I haven't taken it. Is this a good or bad thing? So he, he must be receiving this on, at home, a lot of mail, maybe 
credit card company saying, hey, apply for this credit card, is it a good or a bad thing that he is not applying for these? Juan, do you want me to answer or? Yeah, I think he froze yeah. for a second. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you have to, there are a couple things that you have to keep in mind if you decide to go ahead and accept one of these credit cards. And you don't want to have too much credit either. So what I always suggest is use a card that you can have for one, um, for unexpected emergencies. I mean, things do happen and it's okay to have one. But when you're choosing a card, you want to make sure that there's no annual fee. Why would you want to pay a fee to use this card? Make sure that there's no annual fee. Two, look at the interest rate. Because if you're not able to pay it off on a month-to-month -month basis, then what's going to essentially end up happening is that that interest rate is going to be um, assessed on the payment outstanding. And the other thing I would say is compensate yourself for using the credit card. There's some credit card providers that will allow you to have rewards at no cost. And again, I no cost. You do not want to pay to be rewarded using the card. So maybe you get cash back, maybe it's point. But if you do that, the best way to utilize a credit card is using it and paying it off. But do not accept all offers that would be, you know, crazy. You want to be disciplined and you want to just take out a credit card that you know if you maxed out, you're going to be able to repay. Okay. And then somebody says, um, asked a question saying, is it okay if someone does not have a credit report? And Lisa's asking this question. No. <laughs> they need to establish a credit report. Those are the steps that we got early. The loan, a credit card, maybe a retail card. Those are, those are important because no does not allow or give us anybody the ability to make you a loan or allow you to verify that you exist in our, in our world, meaning that you have a history of where you borrowed before, understood the keyword responsibility, and gone from there. So, Ryan, you want to you kind of give a little bit more? Yeah. Um, and yes. so, if you can walk away walking through life without using any credit, then yes, it'll be okay. But I highly doubt, I, I know when I bought my home, I didn't have $150,000 to purchase my home. So thank God I had credit, and I was able to show that I could repay this loan and I had enough income. The only thing that not having credit is, is, is beneficial is if you're just working on cash. But I'm telling you, at one point in your life, you're going to need to, to finance something. It's inevitable. Um, if not, we wouldn't be able to have a home, we wouldn't be able to have cars, we wouldn't be able to pay our medical bills because those do get expensive. So I would just say, you know, I, I know we're all afraid of it because we just don't understand it and sometimes I don't even understand credit. I don't know how they calculate credit, but it's okay to establish and secure credit cards and like I said, if you ever have doubts, I'm pretty sure a lot of bankers will be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. So another question that came in um, is uh, Jessica's asking, I'm paying for my Time Warner cable internet. Is this affecting my credit score? So paying, I guess, a, a bill on time. Well, utility bills do not report on the credit report. So most times, even though you're paying, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't create a score for you. But it does help you in this aspect. It helps you because if you ever want to apply for a loan and there's no credit to go back, uh, there's no credit report to, to kind of see your history, then what can potentially happen is these utilities, your cable bill or your, or your internet bill, they may be able to write a letter and say, Jessica, you have paid on time for 24 months. You know, you haven't defaulted. You haven't gone to collection. And that kind of gives the underwriter, whoever's doing the loan or the credit card, gives them a better feeling about what what it is that you your repayment history is. So you should always pay your utility bills on time because that can serve as a voucher in the future. Okay. So um, we have two more questions that have come in, and we'll uh, end the, this session um, with this question. And hopefully Ariana and Juan would want to later on the year do another one, maybe a part two. Um, uh, this one could be one that um, we can bring in more challenging thoughts, but even this 
I've learned a lot myself. Uh, and so Cher is asking, in a saving account, you're allowed to withdraw three times per month. How much of the money in that account can you withdraw each time? Well, it's all going to depend on if there's a minimum balance on the savings account. So I'll give an example of our savings account. Our savings accounts have two requirements, one at which one you can go ahead and uh, fulfill. Either you can maintain $300 in a savings account on a monthly basis and on a daily basis, or two, you can have a reoccurring transfer from your check into your savings, and because of that transfer, it avoids you having to keep a minimum balance in your savings. Now, you can withdraw all of your money. We're not going to hold you back from taking the money. Just understand that if the requirements is for you to keep 300 and you drop, there may be a maintenance fee associated with the withdrawal, but we will never hold you back from withdrawing your own money. Okay. And then another question is um, from Yareli. And Yareli is asking, it, at what age is the best to start building credit? I would say that the best time would be at the age of 18, and I'll tell you why. As students, you may find yourself wanting to do student loans, and when they do student loans, you want to be able to show that you have good repayment history and also get favorable interest rates, because if there's no credit history, they may extend a loan to you, but at a very high interest rate. So a lot of times, now, if you ask your parent or a family member to co-borrow, keep in mind that if you mess up, and you don't pay, that actually that negatively impacts their credit. You could potentially be the reason why they get declined on the loan, even though it, it's not something they even use, utilize. It's not their credit card, it's your credit card. So a lot of times, 18-year-olds go ahead and co-sign with their, their parents, but you have to understand if you do that, you are running the risk of hurting their credit if you're not disciplined and responsible. So the best way to do it, and like Juan said, is doing it in a very independent manner. Gather up some savings and do a secure credit card where you secure the funds in exchange for a credit card, even though the interest rate is going to be higher, and that's inevitable because you don't have any credit history. So because of the risk, you're going to pay a higher interest rate. And when you do that, you start building credit, and what I would say is use it, pay it off. Use it, pay it off. And that's going to start building credit. And I guarantee you within six months, you're going to have all these pre-approval letters coming through the mail, and you're just not going to know what to do. <laughs> yep, and choose carefully. Yes. So um, just to kind of do a really quick recap, I think some of the things that I personally am taking away from this is um, when you want to receive later on in life a loan, via you want to buy a home or do something or um, be able to get somebody to trust you, you need to show them that you have had stability in your uh, way that you handle your money. And one of the things that I'm learning from this is the savings accounts is really important, right? That at the end of the month when I'm paying, there's going to be two things that I need to figure out if there's something I need or something I want and that I should make sure that at the end of the month I am saving. Uh, the, the other thing that I think that's really important for our students, um, especially because these are students that didn't have this uh, social security number before, didn't have ways to create credit, and um, one of the things is that it's not really a daunting thing. We don't have to go out looking for a credit card that's going to give us $25,000 credit limit but rather something small. And I, and I remember Juan talking about that, right? Maybe a, a secure credit card that um, can show us and can show the, the people who are wanting to lend to us that we've been consistent um, and that we haven't really like either overdrawn the account or not paid uh, an account on time. So start, starting small, little by little, can get you a very long ways out. Um, to helping you one day be able to, you know, not only have good credit, but also get that money when you need um, to borrow it. Anything else before we say, and people are, have been already saying, thank you so much for this information. It's been so helpful. Um, so I agree, hands down, my favorite hangout thus far, and we're really, really happy that both Juan and Ariana were with us today. Anything else you guys want to add? Well, 
At least no, for thank me, you, I, and um, go yeah. Spurs. Go. <laughs> go Spurs. <laughs> oh, I, well, I just, at least for me, I just want to say thank you so much because even when I teach this, I learn something, and I actually get reminded as to what are the behaviors I need to do myself. So I'm a banker, and I've been doing this for seven years, and I don't quite have it 100% right. So I just want you to understand that you're going to make mistakes, but you learn from them. But now that you're a little bit more educated, you're not going to make the drastic mistakes that I made and have a hard time as I did, you know, learning how to build credit. So it's okay, but thank you so much, Gabby and Elzar, for putting this together. I'm very appreciative, and this is something that I personally am very passionate about, financial literacy, because it's not really taught in the schools, and I think that we could probably have a stronger economic uh, economy if our, everyone knew how to, how to do their basic banking. So, like I said, um, my, the invitation of you sending out emails, if you, you, know, you don't want to ask personal questions, please feel free to email me. Gabby has my email. She can pass it on. So please don't hesitate. And I promise you, I'm not a scary person. I'm not going to say, well, what are you doing asking me these questions? I genuinely want to help you. So please, uh, with all confidence, please send me an email, and I'd be more than happy to respond to you. Great. Thank you so much. And this concludes our financial literacy uh, financial Responsibility Google Hangout with BBNT Bank. Thank you so much. Right, goodbye. Have everyone a good weekend.